Hello everybody. I'm glad you made it back for my second video in this new grad new series. This video is going to be based off of my experience and other nurse experience in the reality check of nursing because once you start getting into your orientation you may have already seen this or you probably will see this. The nursing world that you learn in the textbook and the real world nursing don't necessarily always line up and from one nurse to another you should know that while there may be a big gap between nurse textbook world and real world nursing, there are ways to kind of ease the transition so you can be successful and confident in the new nurse you're becoming. I'm going to talk about this in a couple ways. One, the first way is when you start out as a nurse, you're going to be learning at the speed of light. Nurses experienced and non-experienced will tell you when you get into your orientation on your floors and in your units, it's pretty much you hit the ground running and that's how you learn. There are going to be days where you are going to feel very defeated. There's going to be days that you feel very accomplished. Don't let the days where you feel defeated hinder your growth and your progress that you're making in your orientation. Two is pressure. You're going to have a tremendous amount of pressure on you to succeed and to you compare yourself to your people that are in your units that are starting with you. Everyone grows and learns and does things at their own pace. Don't let someone else's ability to start IVs better than you on day two of orientation hinder your progress on wanting to learn about a certain disease process. Just go at your own pace. You'll get there eventually. Just don't compare yourself to other people. And the third tip I have is organization. You're going to be bombarded with patient loads that you have never seen before. In nursing school, you may take care of one, maybe two patients, but you're not taking care of that patient on your own. You still have someone to report back to. Now, it's on you. Yes, you're going to have a preceptor for a 10, 12, 14 weeks, however long your unit's orientation is, but for the most part, what happens to these patients is on you. So try to come up with a systematic method, whatever fits your learning style, to be able to organize what you need to do for these patients. And I always say, remember ABCs. What patients do you want to see first? and prioritize what needs to be done on that patient first. Do you want to assess this patient? Do you want to give this patient medication first? Things like that. And people are going to tell you, oh, you don't need to write anything down. Just you're supposed to remember everything. When you're starting out, I want you to get you a, a notepad, write your report sheets out, write down everything you need to do for that patient, write down all the times you're going to go check on that patient so you can hold yourself accountable and you can make sure you're doing what you need to be doing to take care of the patient because you work too hard for that nursing license to get it thrown away because you missed something that could have not been missed. The fourth tip I have for you is working with the healthcare team. When you start working on your unit, you're gonna be dealing with phlebotomy, patient care techs, CNAs, MDs, MPs, PAs, respiratory, a cardiologist, neurologist, surgeons, and all the people who work with them. You need to be able to 
ask questions, but you want to be able to let the person who's there is their area of expertise guide the conversation. You need to be able to know, hey, I need my patient has a blood gas order. I need you need to be able to know who you need to call to make sure that gets done because that goes off for so long and patients start to deteriorate with their oxygen saturation and with their breathing and there's no ABG then they're going to be looking at you not the respiratory therapist on why that wasn't done so don't let that happen and the fifth tip I have is patience and patience you're going to be dealing with lots of patients that some of them are going to be nice, some of them are going to be not so nice. You have to try to just weed through all of the personalities that you're going to come in contact with, which is very, very hard. Even for experienced nurses, that's very hard to weed through. But just remember why you got into this profession, and as long as you always put the patient first and what's right for the patient, then you'll do fine. Sixth tip is you're now responsible for other people's lives. This is accurate. Previous tips, you're responsible for other people's lives. Think of the person that's in that bed in front of you as one of your family members and how you would want them to be treated if your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa was in that bed. As long as you keep that in the back of your mind, you'll be fine. And my final tip is a range of emotions. As a new nurse, you are going to probably have days where you go home crying. There will be days where you have full of energy and happiness and like you, you got that hard stick that no one else could get or you've found something on an assessment on a patient that no one else caught. And that's going to be a big win for you. And there's going to be days that you miss something, something small, that someone else caught, and it's going to try to eat you alive. It's going to weigh on you heavily. Try to just not let it by distracting yourself is something you've done good for that day. Stay focused on the positives. Don't dwell on the negatives. And that will ensure that you gain confidence in your skills and nursing assessments and abilities as you embark on this new journey. And that's all I have for the reality check. I'm nursing. I hope you come back for next week's video and I will talk to y'all then. Bye!